what's up, Jock? Hey there, Megan. We heard the celebration even from you heard it the from press here, huh? room. Yeah. Can you just describe what the message was to this group and what that moment was like? Yeah, I think overall we just talked about uh, in a game like this, going into the break, uh, where everyone is ready to go into the break, uh, to be mentally and physically uh, have the will to get through this game and grind it out. And, um, you know, both teams have an equal opportunity. And who's going to continue to uh, not give in? We grind this thing out. We stay together as a team. And uh, we got rewarded for it. And speaking of rewarded, Mikel Bridges tonight, new career high night from you, from for him. What did you see from his game tonight that allowed him to kind of get going offensively? Yeah, I think overall, just his spirit and energy and juice, even at uh, our walkthrough today, like uh, he had the mindset, it seemed like that uh, he wasn't going to let us lose. And uh, at halftime, uh, he, he had it going early and then just really had some good looks to go down. The threes were able to go down for him. But uh, I think overall, it was his attitude and mindset of not letting us uh, uh, not go away with a win tonight. And during pregame, you said that the challenge is going to be trying to find that new identity. What glimpses of the identity that you like that you saw tonight? Yeah, I thought we really dictated things in the second half. We didn't uh, allow them to get to their spots, uh, more deflections in the second half, uh, turned them over more in the second half. So that was to our advantage. And then we got out, and, and hopefully the strength of this team is we can continue to run third and fourth quarter. So we were able to do that and get some easy buckets just because we do have the depth to get out and run, make or miss. Coach, we spoke about Generating offense has to come swinging the ball moving around it has to be a team effort when a guy like Mikhail is able to go off like he did tonight What type of ripple effect does that have on the offense and what you're able to do? Yeah, it's huge uh, Then you were able to uh, see other guys have space to shoot threes um, You were able to see Nick get on top of the rim a few times because of that um, and then also, you, you know, you look at uh, our ability to get into the paint, uh, whether it was through drive and kick. Uh, Cam Thomas garnered a lot of attention tonight. Uh, they even got to a point of double teaming, so uh, we use that to our advantage. But uh, Mikhail's ability to just make shots at the end of the day was huge for us. I mean, uh, we've been searching for that. We'll continue to on a night where um, you know, some nights – some guys going to have it, some guys don't. Uh, we just need all of the above. Any night, anyone, come help us. And, and second, you guys held the Heat bench to just 17 points. Uh, Cam outscored them himself. Just what were you guys able to do defensively to kind of make them a non-factor? Yeah, we talked about being more physical. Uh, more physical in our switching, more physical on the off-ball screens, just really getting uh, our hands on people. Uh, the referees only can call a you know, certain amount of fouls a little bit, so we wanted to really just be more aggressive, and I uh, thought we did that. And you can see it just by the drop balls that they had, the deflections that we had, uh, so we were able to dictate some things in the second half for sure. And our bench did a great job of kind of uh, being ready to play and, and giving us some juice as well. Jack, I had a couple for you. Going off that, I mean, you talked pregame about how, you know, you needed Cam to kind of have 40 or more of those three games during the transition to, uh, from the trade, but that's not, you know, sustainable or going to be the deal going forward. I mean, what he gave you tonight with, you know, the 19 off the bench, you know, 10, 11 shots, four assists, I mean, is that more of what you hope to replicate with him going forward, I guess? Without a doubt, Alex. I, I think that's uh, an ideal picture tonight uh, to, for him to come off the, the bench and have the attention that he garnered, to, to be able to make shots for us, to be able to uh, create for us. There was a little bit of low, low uh, in our offense before he checked in, and he has the ability to create shots for us. So really needed it tonight. I thought he was composed. I thought he used uh, each possession and, and was pretty efficient with it, making the right decisions, uh, which is growth for him. So definitely Definitely more so what we wanted him to see. And after, oh. go ahead. I, I'm gonna I'm I'm overrule him. Go ahead. You said two. I heard you say two. Go ahead, Alex. Yeah, thank you. Um, you. A lot of guys talked after the garden about you know getting stagnant, kind of like what you were saying, and and also you talked about the pressure that Spencer has both from a playmaking and a three point shooting standpoint. You, know, you guys won comfortably, I guess tonight yeah. with him only having nine. If you can just kind of speak to, you know, the playmaking without him. You know, you get yeah. three, six guys with three or more assists, and then also just the 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 ability to kind of do that without him having that kind of pressure. Yeah, I knew you had a great question in you, if we're without a doubt. It, it was... Uh, it, I'm my it, boss, though. <laughs> you're spot on with it. You know, the coaches, before we kind of walked in, we talked about how really... 
Nick and Spencer didn't have uh, their best of nights, but we've seen them play better. And for this group to still be able to create shots for each other, cover for each other on the defensive end of the floor, and uh, play collectively as a group, it really is, I, I think, a sign of who we need to be. Um, just because our group, I'm not sure Mikhail's going to score 45 every night. I'm not sure Spencer's going to have 20 in the first half every night. Uh, so uh, that ability to pick each other up and uh, create for each other and stay together, it's kind of uh, who we have to be identity-wise. Okay, now I can go? No. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry, Aaron. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm sure it was a pretty you know, lousy feeling when you heard you were trading Kevin Durant. Uh, when, when you found out you were getting Bridges back, you know, I've heard a lot of coaches through the years talk about him. They seem to really value what he does on the court. What, what was your kind of feeling when you heard, okay, this is one of the guys in the package? Yeah, I'm really, you know, just all honesty, I'm, I'm extremely excited about this group. Uh, um, that part of, you know, the old era is gone. We got a new era and we have some, uh, some guys in the locker room who can really play the game of basketball, who really want to learn about the game, who want to be pushed and coached. And uh, Mikel Bridges is open-minded, but at the same time um, has a, a consciousness about him that he can communicate with his teammates. He has a joy about him. Every day I see him in the gym, uh, he works on his game. Uh, so extremely pleased that he's a part of our future going forward. Uh, if you want different guys to, to represent you as a, as a franchise, uh, I'm quite sure when he goes to uh, schools and does public appearances, when he's in the locker room with this group, uh, when he's talking to his head coach after walkthrough today, uh, extremely impressive as a human being and uh, 45 helps too as a basketball player. Alex stole my great question, so I'm going to put it here. Uh, reg regarding with Cam, uh, I'm curious. You said this is kind of the template yeah. that you're looking for. Is that because you want to look at him and say, all right, this is a guy who can essentially be a microwave scorer and give me a significant punch in very limited minutes off the bench when he's separated from our starters? Or is that just because you need punch in that unit? Or was there some other reason that this is the perfect fit for him. Yeah, I think really, Brian, it boils down to the number of guys we have. So tonight I decided to go with 10 guys. And, uh, you know, Seth got the short end of the stick a little bit with his minutes tonight. Uh, and so uh, I think really that's what it boils down to. Dorian didn't play as many minutes tonight. And it's just going to be some nights where defensively we need Dodo and Mikhail uh, on the floor and uh, we need Nick on the floor. We went small tonight to extend and put another small with Dodo planned the five uh, to give us the opportunity to put another small on the floor. We're playing 10 guys right now. Eventually, that's going to whittle down to nine uh, or eight as you get into the playoffs. Uh, but I think that's the biggest thing is being able to utilize the depth, the minutes, and hopefully Cam is efficient coming off the bench right now uh, in the time that he gets. We've had conversations about it, and uh, he's been receptive to it. I think tonight he really showed how he can come into the game, make an impact, but we're also able to play the other smalls that we have uh, to capitalize on the depth of, of our team. Alex wants to press his left with another highlight about that. Um, you know, the last three games... <laughs> <laughs> The last three games, you know, Nick hasn't been bad by any means, but he yeah. hasn't been, you know, the double-double machine that he was at the level he was playing at, you know, pre-trade. I guess, what, what do you make of his, this recent stretch from him? Alex, I, I wish I could tell you how much this, this young man has given us. He is, he is tired, and he has been tired. And uh, you see tonight, eight, uh, four minutes into the game, Nick Claxton was tired. And so I said it before the game, it was already on my mind. I'm already thinking about how can I get him through this game and us get a win. Uh, he's given us everything he's had. Uh, played more minutes this year, like I said, than two years combined. And so um, that's why he plays 20 minutes at, at, the, at the Garden. Uh, we were trying to figure out how can we get this dude to the end line to get to some recovery over All-Star break. Uh, I appreciate him. I told him that. Let's get through this game. I love that you've given every ounce Refresh, reload, because we got some more. Uh, but this is new territory for him. And uh, we have to be conscious about how much we put on this plate, because we, we've asked a lot for him. Uh, just imagine before our new group came here and the defensive responsibility that he had of guarding people on the perimeter at the rim on a nightly basis. So uh, he'll recharge. We'll give him some love, and he'll be back to his double-double machine, hopefully, after the break.